from somewhere, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Uh, it's just possible, man. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Thank you for tuning in. Here's a story from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Love this one. Nine minutes after receptionist Tamara Klopfenstein, there's a name, (laughs) I just think of having sex with someone named Tamara Klopfenstein. (laughs) I think of that slogan, with a name like Smuckers. Nine minutes after receptionist Tamara Kloffenstein complained for the second time about getting her boss's coffee. She was fired. (laughs) All right. I didn't expect to serve and wait on you by making and serving you coffee every day, Kloffenstein emailed to her boss at National Sales and Supply, LLC of Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. Manager Jason Schrager told her the issue wasn't, quote, open for debate. Instead, the issue caused a brouhaha in federal court. Earlier this month, U.S. District Judge Burl M. Schiller couldn't resist punning his way through a decision on the deeper issue. Whether Klopfenstein's managers had created a hostile and discriminatory work environment by requiring the receptionist to fetch them coffee. By the way, I would think that's what the judge would say. I thought, mistakenly, as you'll find here, I thought somewhere along the way there was some kind of court decision that said you can't make women make coffee in the office. Well, it says here that Judge Schiller wrote that he uh, that she had no grounds for her complaints of sexual discrimination. Schiller wrote, the act of getting coffee is not by itself a gender-specific act. The fact that a vice president wrote, looks nice, dresses well on notes when she was hired, also doesn't add up to discrimination, the judge wrote. Schiller wrote, while the behavior of plaintiff supervisors may have been rude, gauche, or undesirable, their actions do not violate federal or state anti-discrimination law. Kloffenstein, who worked at the company for six weeks in 2006, six weeks, already getting uppity and then filing a lawsuit. That was a hiring mistake. Plans to appeal, said her attorney Timothy M. Coleman of Langhorne, Pennsylvania. If to coffee or not to coffee is the question, the answer depends, like many workplace issues, on interpersonal dynamics, say Philadelphia area administrators echoing the opinion of workplace experts. In other words, if people respect one another and work as partners, coffee is no big deal. It's all in how they are asked. Yeah, right, snorted Hannah Sellingson, author of New Girl on the Job, which came out in paperback in April. She said, I think it's a little precious to say you'll only get a coffee if you are asked in a way that feels good for you. 
There are a million other girls who want your job. The economy is tough. You going to jeopardize your job for a cup of coffee? Right on, sister. The trick she said is to walk the fine line between being helpful and being sidelined is the office sweetie who makes the coffee and plans the birthday parties. She said, I caution women not to fall into that trap. That is when job negotiating skills count, said author Dondi Skumasi, a former bank teller who became a banking vice president and has written Design for Success, the Ten Commandments for Women in the Workplace. First of all, she said, pick your battles. Second, bring something more to the job, no matter how low you are on the total pole. Then, after a while, if getting coffee feels demeaning, it'll be easier to ask for a change. Mostly, the coffee issue percolates below the surface. I don't think it's as prevalent as it used to be, said Nicole Piccoli. Senior Division Manager of the Center City Location of Office Team, a staffing company. Their roles are a little more different. I think the bosses would be more happy to have our temps put together a presentation for them than to get them a cup of coffee. But, she said, if getting the boss a cup of coffee is what the job demands, her temps will do it. Some of them are angling for full-time jobs. Audrey Jackson, an administrative assistant at an engineering firm, doesn't mind the coffee. She said, I would do anything for my boss except sleep with him. Because he's married. (laughs) Maybe she'd sleep with him then. He was single. Edward J. Coriel, the head of the Carpenters Union in Philadelphia, never asked his longtime assistant for coffee, even when he drank it. But his assistant... Maureen McGovern, on their song The Morning After, I think it was, sometimes finds herself bringing coffee to visitors. How the mighty have fallen. She said, I'm not opposed to it, but I don't like it. If it's black, that's an easy one. But I'm not doing any skinny mocha lattes with soy. Another uppity individual there. Marianne Gabuzda. Works for Villanova women's basketball coach Harry Peretta. And used to work for Villanova's revered men's coach, Raleigh Massimino. Peretta doesn't drink coffee, but she used to bring it with sweet and low for Massimino. It's not that big a deal for me, she said. It's not a big deal for lawyer Frank Rothermel either. Every day he frosts cappuccino for a paralegal who works for another lawyer in his office. When the machine breaks, she brings him coffee. Rothermel said he would never ask an assistant to get him coffee. He said, I think that's taboo. Well, it's not taboo. The judge said it's okay. Brian Jackson, the Harrisburg lawyer who represented national sales and supply in federal court, said he never asked his assistant for coffee, mainly because he likes to get out of the office. Jackson naturally agreed with the judge's ruling that there was no discrimination at national sales to show discrimination. Klopfenstein would have had to be able to point to a male worker with a similar status who didn't have to get coffee. Exactly. But the previous receptions were all women and didn't object to getting coffee for Vice Presidents Jay Schrager and Richard Bloom, Jackson said. Schrager and Bloom did not return calls to their office to discuss the case. After they fired her, Klopfenstein said in deposition she became angry and depressed. Boo freaking who? You uppity bitch. Just my opinion. Bloom and Sh- she's litigious. My opinion is that she's an uppity bitch. My opinion is protected by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. So if I think you're an uppity bitch, I'll say it. I think you're an uppity bitch. Bloom and Schrager, the Levittown woman, said, took basically the entire job as a joke and fired me because I didn't bring them coffee at a certain time. They had no idea that I needed that job as much as I did. Hey, listen, lady, how much you need the job is not the company's problem. Company's problem is the productivity of the company. Your problems are your problems. 
You need the job? Tough luck. They wanted coffee. You don't want to serve coffee? They'll get someone who will serve coffee. And the judge backed them up. And now that your name is on that blacklist that's going around of women who file lawsuits against their former employers, good luck with your next job there, sweetheart. Let's see how soon she gets hired for another job. Isn't that the chick who sued her boss because he wanted her to get called? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, we've got your application on file, and uh, we'll give you a call if anything opens up. You're going to be waiting a long time for your next job, sister. I say that getting coffee, if that's what the boss wants, that's the job. Don't like the job, get another goddamn job. Am I wrong about this? Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. Like it. 1 800 5800 my husband listens to your radio station. Every time he comes home after listening to your radio station, he's like in a bad mood really? all the time. Uh, he, he must enjoy it. He listens all the time. Oh, no, he, I don't know. I don't know what it is. You're just brainwashing him somehow, and I don't mm. like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Well, yes, you found it. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. So a judge says it's okay for the receptionist to be told to get coffee. If she doesn't like it, tough luck. What do you think about that? Let's say hello here to Derek on the Tom Likas Show. Hey there, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Yeah, like all things in business, it's a uh, it's a money thing. It comes down to an equation. Um, if I get paid two hundred dollars an hour to do my job, you get paid twenty dollars an hour to do your job. It makes no sense for me to get distracted from the expensive things I'm working on, even if it takes five minutes. It's five minutes I could be, uh, you know, spending doing, uh, you know, other things and either generate, you know, money for the company, et cetera. And so, you know, it's, what's your pay grade? If your pay grade is a lot less than mine, you should be the one to go get me coffee. It's real simple. And if you don't like it, you should probably quit. I mean, what is a receptionist anyway? Well, I mean, it's the, the same thing It goes for filing. That's it's the lowest person on the totem pole in the office. The things that you might do, it's because for whatever reason, my skill set, my intelligence, my experience uh, produces more money for the company in some way, shape, or form, either by bringing in more income or cutting costs. But even if that's not true, even if, you, even if you just want to have somebody bring you coffee because just to show you can do it, hey, it's your company. You have every right to do that. If somebody thinks that's, if you think it's a demeaning job, hit the road. You know, my, my boss, I'm vice president of my company. My boss, um, is so that way. If, if you don't like it, hit the road. And he's very fair and even and just and rewards you for hard work. But if you cop an attitude because you're asked to do something you believe is menial, you need to go find another job. Maybe there's better, uh, you know, grass on the other side of the farm. We had this conversation the other day. We were talking to our screener, Dean J. D'Amelio, and he said, you know, I, I screen calls. That's what I do. I said, look, you're also my fluffer. Now, the guy exactly. before you, he was my fluffer. <laughs> Now, if you don't like it, there's plenty of other screeners out there who are willing to come in here and do the fluffing. You know, it's also true that if sometimes you don't take the opportunity specifically to insert yourself in the... By the way, by the way, he grumped, by the way, by the way, he grumbled about it for a while, but ultimately, he started fluffing. (laughs) That's great. Well, can you blow me up, Tom? Of course I can. Take no crap from the from the help. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Kyle on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Kyle. Tom, uh, how's it going? It's how's going you? okay. Hey, uh, I just wanted to call in real quick and uh, just tell you you're so right about this chick, dude. She she is the bottom of the totem pole. She's an uppity bitch. 
I mean, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty. She shouldn't be. Uh, she shouldn't be working, man. Happy if you don't want, by the way, by the way, kids, if you don't want to do demeaning work, how about you go to college instead of sitting at the front desk filing your nails all day long and talking to your friends? Exactly, man. She's in an entry level position, and she wants to cry about all this drama. You know what? I know like five girls at the Starbucks who wouldn't complain about getting their boss no coffee, and they would be glad to be getting paid a salary or whatever the hell she's getting. I, know? by the way, by the way, girls, I. I have an entry-level position for you. <laughs> the entry-level position is right under my desk. Yeah, exactly. But um, they, I mean, that's, that's the problem with these women nowadays, man. They, they and after I'm done, get me a cup of coffee, for God's sake. Yeah, no work ethic whatsoever. They just want a paycheck, and they, they want us to be their daddies, you know? Like, give me the car, give me the money, and... Uh, I mean, if, if, they want, if they want me to be their daddy, they better be putting in some work, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly right. All right, Tom. Well, can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Tiffany on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Oh, my God. I can't believe I got through finally. Neither can I. I've been I. for a long time. Yeah. I just wanted to say that I totally agree with you. I really don't know where women get off thinking that they can just plant themselves in these positions and find reasons to come up with lawsuits. That's what it seems like to me. It doesn't seem like she went there wanting to do her job because they're not really asking very much of her. Uh, when you are a receptionist, you are the lowest form of humanity at a company. You have the lowest job there is. Yeah, the, that's the lowest. Whole point of it. That's the Anybody point of who it. doesn't like go back to school and get a degree and apply for a better job. That's if you're the receptionist, you got a lot of downtime and you've got time to get coffee. And if the boss decides to get in coffee is more important than whatever little menial tasks you have, then you drop those and you get the goddamn coffee, you bitch. Yeah, well, I just feel that. Self-respect doesn't mean bitching, and I think that's what a lot of these women are trying to do now. You know, they think, oh, you know, I'm not being respected as a woman, but I don't think there's anything disrespectful about it at all. There's a Look, lot worse they could be asked to do. I work in the entertainment industry and the film industry, and there's a lot worse they can be asked to do. And there really aren't that many rules and regulations in that industry, so she better be glad she had the job. Uh, uh, look, uh, uh, the bottom line here is people don't know their place. You're the receptionist. I totally agree. You are Thank a step so above. Much. You are a step above an intern. You get a paycheck and you work forty hours a week. I totally agree. I hear you. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you for having me on. Bye. Bye. There goes Tiffany. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here comes Anna on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Anna. Hi, Tom. I was just calling to that I totally agree with you. If you know they don't like being a receptionist, then why the hell are they going to work? They should have actually just gone back to school, get a degree, and they wouldn't be having that problem. And what part of actually getting a cup of damn coffee? Well, if you don't like getting coffee for people, maybe you should have studied a little harder in school. Exactly. I'm sure there are people. I'm sure there are people who don't like putting my groceries in the bag. Yeah, but you know, maybe they shouldn't have knocked up their girlfriend in high school. Exactly. But, you know, first of all, she was there for six weeks and she complained twice. It's like she should have, if she didn't like it the first time, she should have just quit the first time. But then actually filing a lawsuit, is, I think it's just stupid. I am so excited that she lost that lawsuit. I think it's great. And I think every boss out there should celebrate by demanding a cup of coffee from the receptionist tomorrow morning. I agree with you. Yeah, Thank, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Appreciate okay. the call. Here's Jackie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are Hi. you? Great. Fantastic. Um, I was actually just calling to say that I actually got my start in the advertising world um, through going to a company as a receptionist. And pretty much, I don't know if this is so much of an issue as, oh, these women, this and that, whatever, which I do find somewhat ridiculous, but to the extent that the callers are ragging on it. But it comes down to any position, any job, any anyone with your with a college degree or not, when you're going into a position, you need to just work and work hard and do whatever is demanded of the position. I don't agree with um, 
with uh, having a lawsuit over a cup of coffee. But I will say, as a female, though, in the workplace, um, when I was starting out, um, I started off at a pharmaceutical company, and my boss clearly came on to me. And um, somewhat looking back on it, I kind of thought, oh, I totally should have sued him or done something or um, along those lines. But I really was at the point that I, was, that I just really wanted to get my career going. And unfortunately, I chose my career over nailing this guy for something that was completely inappropriate within the workforce. Well, there's nothing inappropriate about uh, being told to get a cup of coffee. The only time no, it's inappropriate. No, 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 absolutely not. But like, but I guess all I'm saying is that no matter what, men or women, when you're going into the workforce, starting new jobs, you're trying their you're there to prove yourself and to be an asset to the company. So you just work hard, do whatever is expected of you, cross the T's, dot the I's, do whatever you have to do, and make a name for yourself. That's and and let me just say this about receptionists, and I'm just going to make this as a general statement. There are exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, receptionists are girls who look better than average, didn't want to study hard, wanted to come in and hopefully meet a rich client of the company or the owner of the company, and had no intention of achieving anything as a career goal at all. They go in there with minimal skills, minimal education. What education? What education does it take to become a receptionist? Um, there are some positions, like, there are certain industries that really, you have to go in from ground up. How many people, probably a number of your listeners has gone in, have gone in as, uh, working in the mailroom or working as a receptionist or an assistant to someone. It's but that's way. just it. Working in the mailroom is also the lowest rung on the totem pole. It's the I'm, same I'm thing. Not, I'm not saying anything against that, but I'm just saying, although it, it's not a... It's not a question necessarily of education, but it's also sometimes an issue of industry. I do believe there's a lot of guys who go to the mailroom, work their way up through William Morris. I do I do know that's true. But most receptionists are not working their way up to president of the company. They're not. They're not. And it's not because they're being asked to serve coffee. It's because they didn't bother to continue their education. That's why at 19 they're available to sit there with their cleavage hanging out, filing their nails, and occasionally answering the telephone. There are always exceptions to every rule, my friend. I said that earlier. There are exceptions <laughs> to every rule, but generally speaking, that's generally the truth. Generally, receptionists have achieved nothing, plan on achieving nothing, and they just sit there and practically do nothing all day, then complain about how hard they work. I've worked in offices. I've seen what it's like. Uh, you know, and I'm just coming from experience. I, I've, I'm in a company that I started off as a receptionist. I've moved up into a higher level. There have been um, two other individuals that started off in my same position. One's at a director level currently. So it, it really comes down to the person and what they choose to make of it. But most of them are, are there to meet a rich guy or a successful guy. Tomato, and... tomato, most skew, most, you know, just... most. I, I, I can't. So the say fact that you. you and a couple of oddballs in the entertainment industry who work with you, the fact that they did it doesn't mean the vast majority aren't what I describe. You know how many receptions I've seen sitting there filing their nails online, reading uh, online versions of, of bride publications, planning their weddings, uh, playing hangman, uh, and occasionally answering the telephone and always complaining that they've got too much work to do? You, you, will, you will find that. I'm not, I'm, you're absolutely That's, right That is that. mostly what you will find. Um, I think we're just going to disagree on this issue. Well, I mean, again, you, you, but you, the no. point is, you're saying that because you're not like that, the vast majority of receptionists aren't like that also, and you're wrong. I just don't think you have very valid, valid reasons to, for saying most. I, you know, and yeah, I do, because most are like that. Uh, that's your opinion. The word, but, most, you know, cool. the word most doesn't mean the same as the word all. Those are two different words. They have different meanings. I know, but, and, but I, I think you're kind of... Most is a generalization that you're generalizing. So you're saying most receptionists are earnest individuals who are looking to work their way up to be CEO of corporations. Is that what you're saying? Um, I'm just saying that, you know what, you just... Well, well what is it? Uh, you, can't, you can't have it both ways. Either most of them are sitting around, uh, you know, uh, killing time all day long and waiting until 5 o'clock, or most of them are trying to work their way up to CEO, I which is it? We have to break it down to the demographic because of, the thing is, I completely agree with your situation. We're talking about someone that doesn't go to college, someone that's 19 with their, you know. That's mostly who the receptionists are. Um, 
sure top. <laughs> just, it's, it's, you know, it's, oh, so uh, you're saying that the receptionists are a bunch of road scholars. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying depending on the industry, you have to you have to get your foot in the I'm talking generally. Can you understand what the word generally means? <laughs> I completely understand what you it Do you understand means. what the word most means? Yes. Yeah. Do you understand what the word all means? Sam, I know the system. You're going to just Generally to speaking, most receptionists. I just disagree. I'm you are, but you, you disagree with no facts. You disagree with, you will, you refuse to say that most receptionists are there because they're trying to work their way up in the company. So what are most receptionists, uh, uh motivations for doing this job? Uh, means to an end. Right. And in most cases, the means to an end is to make $350 a week and try to meet a rich guy while, while, while sitting at the front desk and looking pretty. That's mostly the means to an end that they are looking at. Most of them are not looking to be promoted to chairman of the board. It's unfortunate because a lot of them could be. I don't care if it's unfortunate. I don't care what could be. I'm talking about what is. And you just agreed with me by saying, well, it's unfortunate. So you agree it's true, don't you? Uh, I, I just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm stubborn. I can't. I just can't. I can't give it you up. You have to because it's true. <laughs> have a good day, Tom. Yeah, you go. I, I'm going to take that as an agreement whether you give it to me or not. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. All women want to do is break your heart and break your wallet. So hit it, quit it. Hit it and quit it. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. one 800 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We're talking about the lovely Tamara Kloffenstein of the Philadelphia area who uh, lost her gig because she wouldn't get the boss coffee. She was a receptionist. And now a federal judge says, guess what, Tamara? You should have gotten him coffee. Tough luck, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi here to Brandon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Doing okay. Hey, man. I have to say that it's a pleasure to talk to you, man. First time, long time. And I just want to say, man, that these women out here, I just don't understand where their self-respect goes. Because I work alongside with some of the most, the strongest women I've ever met. I'm working 14-hour shifts right now. I've been doing it for two weeks straight. And I've had the same women alongside me, working with me, doing the same kind of work, busting their ass. And I, I can't say, I'd say that I'm, I'm proud to say that I would marry any one of these women because they would treat me right. And it, it disgusts me, man, that these women would act like this. I mean, how are you going to complain about getting coffee? This is what you do. You didn't choose to go to college. I didn't choose to go to college. So what I do every day is I bust my ass as hard and as much as I possibly can. Well, these are the reasons, these are the reasons I don't want to work with a woman. Uh, I you can't know, believe it. Thank goodness. I'm not the boss, so I don't make these decisions. But thank goodness it's all guys working with me. I don't want any chicks in here. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I work with some women. And the women that do work with me work harder than some of the guys, man. I mean, they're respectable women. And I can respect them. But I know the exact kind of women you are talking about. And I, they disgust me. Everything about them is horrible. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it, but I just want to say, Tom, that it's been the biggest pleasure talking to you, man. I'm nervous talking to you because, I mean, I've been listening to you so long, and this is the first time I've gotten through. But I would be, I would be happy to have you take me out with a bomb token and thank you, Jesus. Okay, here you go. Thank you, Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Ashley on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Yes, dear. How's it going? Great. I just cannot believe these women. I am so shocked. I have been feeding my boss for five years. I make breakfast. I bring birthday cake. I bring it, everything for him. I And it's the way to their heart. You have to go to the stomach first. If they're in a good mood, you're in a good mood. You piss them off, then your whole day is screwed. Yeah. I just well, can't imagine saying no to the boss. For you coffee. know, there's 
But, you know, the fact that this was the Philadelphia area tells you a lot. In that northeastern quadrant of the United States, you got those short-haired, chunky, sassy chicks who have a chip on their shoulder. They're homely. They, they're they tired of having to compete with, uh, you know, the hot chicks on the West Coast. And, and they all have this attitude. Yeah, but, okay, if the girl's looking for a husband, like you said working in a receptionist job and not bringing coffee, that just shows right there she's going to be a horrible wife. I cook for my husband every night, and I don't complain about it. It's just something that, you know, either you do or you don't. And I, I think it calms you down when you get home, have a glass of wine, and cook dinner. And then the next day you get up and you bring coffee or you do whatever they want you to do. Exactly. And exactly I right. That. Exactly so right. Is that, your bo- is that your boss? Is that your boss in the background there? No, that's my little one. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ashley. Okay, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. BJ on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Are you there, BJ? Yes. How you doing, Dad? Long time listener, second time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you, BJ. Hey, uh, I got something to say about this. It's simple. Man, woman, whatever it is, I think they just kind of need to know their role. Like the chain of command and just do their jobs. And it's funny now that she's throwing such a fit about getting coffee and when her uh, unemployed ass is at home looking for a job at a company that she's not going to get hired at, who's going to make her coffee then? That's right. That's pretty much what it boils down to. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm a bartender, so I know my job. You know what I mean? Gin and tonic? All right, there you go. You got it, bud. Shut your mouth and do your job. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Now, I don't know a bartender worth his salt who likes making a mojito. Oh. What, would happen, what would happen if a customer came in and wanted a mojito and you said no? Oh, yeah, exactly. You'd get the look of a uh, look of death and probably a uh, nice kick in the ass out the door. That's exactly right. All right. Uh, that's it. If you can, take me out. Uh, my personal favorite. Take me out. Halle Berry, if you can. Halle Berry style. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. We're talking about the receptionist who lost her job because she refused to get coffee. So then she filed a lawsuit, and a federal judge said, "Guess what? You can fire her for not getting coffee. You can." How great is that? One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. That's our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing, man? Doing great. That's good, man. So I'm, I'm from South Africa, and um, I'm an intern, actually, currently now. And uh, I'm working um, with about four ladies. And, um, you know, once in a while, these ladies will go out and they'd, um, not just make me coffee, but make me a sandwich as well. And um, I just feel, you know, that it isn't just about what job you do. It's about the type of person you are. And, uh, man, these ladies are really great. And I just think, you know, women moaning about making coffee, coffee isn't really um, something to bitch about. You know what I mean? That's right. Do it or get out. Exactly. You know? Um, I mean, I, but, you know, just my hope, just my opinion, I hope this chick never, ever gets another job. I hope people remember her name and never, ever hire her for anything. Definitely. Definitely. I mean... If you're going to bitch about something like that, about making coffee, what else are you going to bitch about? You know what I mean? You bitch about your paycheck, bitch about your boss. Who the hell wants someone working for them that's going to bitch the whole time? You know what I mean? I hope, well, you know, Tamara Kloppenstein wanted attention. And so I hope everybody knows that Tamara Kloppenstein is the one who sued the company because they asked her to get coffee when she was the receptionist. And Tamara Kloppenstein not only sued, but she lost. And the judge said she should have gotten coffee. So Tamara Kloppenstein, if you see that resume coming in, just remember, if you don't do it the way she wants you to do it, who knows? She just might file a lawsuit against your company and you. Exactly. Exactly. Why would anybody hire Tamara Kloppenstein after Tamara Kloppenstein filed this lawsuit? I know. I know exactly what you're saying, Todd. And, uh, yeah, so, Tom, that's, that's, um, that's all I wanted to say. Um, could you blow me up? 
I certainly can. Are you ready? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Tony on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. Uh, and let me tell you, I again, like a few callers ago, I chose not to go to college. And I got into a, uh, a very dirty physical trade to make very good money. I'm actually doing very well right now. Point is, when I first started, I was under houses, smelling like sewage. I was in 130-degree attics. I was killing myself at the very beginning. I wish I all I had to do was get my boss a cup of coffee. All Nothing wrong with that, is there? Oh, man. The, for this girl, excuse me, this bitch, to complain about getting coffee is blatant disrespect to all of my other friends and family and everybody else that are working their tails off to make something out of themselves. And this woman wants it handed to her. It's absolutely ridiculous. I am so happy that this judge did not give her what she wanted. And, Tom, could you take me out by, you know, saying this girl's name one more time on the radio just so everybody knows not to hire this girl? Absolutely. Tamara Klopfenstein. If you see that name, you know what to do. Just my fervent hope. She is litigious, you know. But I have a right to an opinion. It's my opinion that nobody should hire her ever again. Just an opinion. People can do what they want, of course. But I'll tell you what. If Tamara Kloffenstein came in here, we'd tell her we'd keep that resume on file, which we would. Keep it right in the shredder. And we'd file the shreds. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Kylie on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you so much. How are you? Do you care? Of course I do. I'm doing great. Great. Well, I was a receptionist for a little while at a plastic surgeon's office in Fountain Valley, California. And when you're the receptionist, that you're, you're it. There's really nobody under you. So if someone comes up to you, if the surgeon comes up to you, if the boss comes up to you and says, listen, I've got a lot of stuff to do today. Can you go run and get me lunch or can you get me a cup of coffee? It's you, baby. It's, you got to do it. You know, you can't just go run around crying about it. Uh, do it or get out. <laughs> exactly. Also, Tom, while I'm on the line with you, I can't even believe I got through. But um, I was in a really, really ridiculous relationship with someone for about a year and a half. And I think talking to you really talks. I mean, like listening to you on the radio really talks some sense into me. And I wanted to thank you. Well, I'm so glad it uh, worked for you. I really am. <laughs> well, thank you. And I wanted you to take me out a certain way. Are you ready for it? Yes. Okay. Travel style, followed by an orgasm, followed by Snoop Dogg, followed by old school. Let's see what we have, Kylie. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge, 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 so finza. Got them all in. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lisa of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Mr. Likas. I just wanted to say that my mom is right about women like her. Women are lazy and no good. They're supposed to go to college, supposed to go to school and finish it. If I only had to go to work every day, get my boss a cup of coffee, and that's all, I'll be so happy because what I'm trying to do is really, really hard. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. You know, bust your and ass. And, and, yeah, I mean, bust your ass, know your place. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.